So Allah says He uses His wills and forcefully sends me astray. He misguides no. me forcefully because it's it's it's, it's Allah no. who is using His will no. right you, now. You said okay. that uh, everything. Just, just, uh, just, just uh, can I speak I'm, I'm, for I'm one second? Please. It's such a simple topic, but people overcomplicate it, and and you're exactly. doing exactly that. So here's the deal. I want you to think of it like this: Is it in God's will for you to okay. go to Paris? Is it in God's will for you to go to paradise? Like you have the capabilities to go to paradise. You have the capabilities of conducting good actions. You have the capabilities to believe. You have the capabilities to do good things, right? Yes. Yes, I have the okay. capabilities, but Allah is misguiding me. No, bro, <laughs> come on, man. With the Work with me here just a little bit, okay? Now, do you ha also hmm. have the capabilities to do bad things? Yes. Do you have the capabilities to end up in hellfire? Yes. If if you have if it's within God's will for you to end up in either place, do you have a problem with that? Um, if God is forcing me to uh, land in one place, then I have no problem. If He's not, then I have no problem. Listen to my question. I just gave you two equal situations. One situation leaves is is. Is it in Allah's will for you to end up in paradise? Meaning, do you have the capabilities of doing good? Okay, so if I do good in my own will, then Allah uh, can send me in paradise. If I do bad in my own will, then Allah can send me to hell. Okay, so now it is in his will, meaning he set the playing field for you. He gave you and okay. he is going to give you many opportunities to do good and many opportunities to do bad, right? No, but Allah says he sends me as to. He's, uh, he's uh, doing the, Just according to Allah's will. He's putting the cart before the horse, bro. Yeshwir, how do you say your name? Is that Yeshwir? Yes, it's uh, Yeshwir Sahota. Okay, where are you calling from, Yeshwir? India. I I'm from India, India bro. All right, what are you what are you doing up so late? I uh, I just wanted to talk to you. I just have uh, doubt on few hadith, so I want to ask. Okay, so what's your yeah. background? Are you are, do you believe in God or what? What are you? What's your religion? Actually, I'm an agnostic. Okay, from what what's your background? What what do your parents believe in? My parents were atheists too, but I'm an agnostic. Okay, let's progress. Right, so you want to what? You want clarification of a hadith? Uh, yes. Why do you want clarification of a hadith if you're not a Muslim? Uh, I want to study every religion. Actually, I question on Hinduism, Christianity, and uh, Islam. And I have to know that, uh, which religion is right so that I can... Uh, right, but you know, I'm asking why hadith? Why not the Quran? Are you saying you believe everything in the Quran? Everything uh, is okay? I I haven't uh, read the whole Quran. Uh, right. So if no you want, objections. I can... No objections no, no. from what you've read in the Quran. I haven't uh, read a lot actually. No, no. I'm asking from what you have read in the Quran. You have no objections at all. Eh? Yeah. It would be uh, nice. It would be nice. Yes, fair. It would be nice to start with the very concept of God that we have, because ultimately everything goes back to this very fundamental reality about God because God is the source of all creation so if people have a wrong concept of God to begin with then you can easily mm. say okay I will check the next religion because that religion is not worth checking now if a religion says God is a potato and that's all it is you know you can make salad out of it and that's it you know that that's not a religion to spend your time investigating mm. initially right you can come back to yes. it later and see how uh, God being a potato is worth uh, listening to. So what is your understanding um, of the Islamic concept of God and how does it compare rationally and how does it you know, make itself uniquely out from the crowd of all the religion when it comes to the concept of God in Islam? Do you, do you have some understanding on that? Um, as far as I have heard and uh, read somewhat, 
I know that Allah, you believe in Allah as one God, and Allah says that if you are Muslim, then you go to Jannah, and if you are, you divide the people in two parts, Muslim and Kafir. It goes the Kafir to the Jahannam, and uh, the Muslims to Jannah. Am I right? There's some sort of disturbance in your microphone. Is it? Do you have like a fan on or something? Or is it uh, in microphone? I guess I, I have a fan on right now. Right, because I, I can yeah, hear yeah. some some uh, feedback from your microphone. Yeah. So when you said so, Allah created, I mean, if you think about it, this Allah created human beings among many other countless creations and endowed the human beings with free will. And of course, free will means some people will use the free will wisely, appropriately, and other people may not use it those people who abuse their free will of course they would face the justice of god because god is not unjust so abusing the free will and committing injustice we're not going to be just let go god will take care of all this injustice committed by people abusing their free will and there will be retribution there will be accountability so people who really misuse their free will commit injustice on earth suffering misery and so on and so forth they're not going to simply just be let go it's not like a holiday here they will be accountable for their misdeeds and so on and this accountability will be in the form of hellfire where they'll be punished but there's already a pre-warning but these are the people who will go to this place of hellfire if they believe in such and such if they do such and such so it's the people who are making their own choice and own consequence or destination by their own free will. Those people who would listen to God's commands and avoid his prohibitions and follow the path that God wants them to follow, they're the ones who become the recipient of his mercy and they're the ones who go to paradise or Jannah. And this is the place of reward. So these two places that we are talking about, people make their own choices and the consequences from the choices and this is what justice is all about so justice demands people are accountable for you know their actions and their belief so this is islamic concept of how people end up in different places you uh, just now you talk about free will so i have uh, read it somewhere no, no, before you go into free will I, I i'm more interested in the concept of god because that's how you will this that's how you will make a comparison and distinction between different religious belief concept because if you cannot get the concept of god right from the get go then there's no point talking about oh let's talk about this free will because god is the one who grants people free will or not grant people free will ultimately it all goes back to god so all of the things that you're going to talk about oh let's talk about morality let's talk about business let's talk about inheritance let these are all things that eventually needs to return to a concept of God who has given information, rules, regulations, commands and prohibitions about all of these things. So you have to start with this very concept. Yeah, so as you said right now that uh, some people uh, choose to become kafir uh, and choose to disbelieve in Allah and then because Allah created them and, uh, and uh, those people are ignorant, so Allah will put them in Jahannam. So I have some uh, doubts regarding this. Allah didn't create these people ignorant and put them in Jahannam. Allah does not commit any level of injustice on his creation. So every human being that has been created, their accountability is in proportion to what they're capable of. They cannot, because God says he doesn't, burden people greater than they can bear that means the level of accountability and so on and so forth they have is on their level so god can give some make someone very knowledgeable and someone you know not so knowledgeable it doesn't mean that they are not able to dispense their duties of what they created for the 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 aim of their life the objectives of their life they're able to fulfill if someone is whatever reason medically say incapacitated they're medically you know, as we said, like they're insane. Um, 
they are not going to be accountable because they do not have the ability, the functionality, the, cap the capacity to reason and differentiate between right and wrong, truth and falsehood. These people will not be accountable. But people who are accountable are those who have the capacity to differentiate, to make distinction between truth and falsehood between right and wrong between error and between something what is you know uh, good so that is the basis of judgment judgment is not something like willy nilly that god just punishes whoever he wills god dispenses his justice based on justice uh but allah says that he misguides people on his own will so is that's why you need to understand when the Quran says God guides as he wills God and, and leaves people astray as he wills. What is his will? He tells you that he does not guide those who are oppressors, those who are liars, those who are arrogant individuals and so on. So he has a law. He has a unique principle of guidance. Guidance is not hmm. arbitrary. Misguidance is not arbitrary. If you want to be guided, God says, firstly, you have to be someone who's sincere. You should stop being oppressors, oppressing other people, and so on and so forth. Certain characteristics you need to get rid of, bad characteristics. Then you will be the recipient of guidance. You yeah, said Allah. Uh, okay. Uh, can I keep my point? Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Uh, so my... Uh, point is that Allah says that he misguides. So you explained the point uh, that he only does that to the people who are ignorant. But ignorant no, people are no, already I misguided. Said so I never said he leaves people who are ignorant. I am saying God's guidance and leaving people not to be guided is based on a principle explained in the Quran very well. You will find many verses in the Quran, ayat in the Quran, Allah says, Inna Allah la yuhibbu God does not love, and he continues who he doesn't love. Or in Allah la yahdi, God does not surely guide, and he gives you the categories of people who doesn't receive his guidance. And if you look into these categories, you will find these are evil, bad traits. And God wants people to remove those bad traits. And once you remove these bad traits, you become recipient of his guidance. Because he guides people whether you are grateful or ungrateful. Whether you are kafir or not kafir, God guides you regardless. Hmm. This is what the Quran says. Very categorical. He will guide people regardless whether they are kafir, ungrateful or not. Mm -hmm. But there are levels hmm. of guidance. So if you want to really hmm. receive the, you know, the guidance from God, you need to first become recipient of it. So God says, for example, hmm. I mean, this is how the Prophet ﷺ explained. If someone commits a sin, it's a, like a black dot is you know you know covering their heart another sin another dot and eventually you find if someone's committing so much sin sin is disobedience of god's will if people keep on disobeying god's will in committing this kind of actions which is considered to be a sin then their heart is like covered with so much of these black dots and it becomes impervious it doesn't penetrate Nothing penetrates to the heart. Guidance would not be able to penetrate to the heart. So if you want, if you know the concept of a sieve, you know how if you put water through, it's not going to go through. It needs to have pores, right? So the heart needs to be porous to receive guidance. If you cover it with sin, you would not be able to receive the guidance. So if someone is really bad and wicked, it will be very difficult for them to receive guidance unless they mend their ways and they have the capacity within their own self, within their will to mend their ways. They just have to make that intention that I am not going to murder. I'm not going to kill. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to cheat. I'm not going to oppress. I'm not going to commit genocide. I'm not going to do this and, and so on and so forth. If they make that intention and work on it, they will be able to stop themselves from doing all these misdeeds. And when they do that, but, make themselves amenable in a good character, this is when it will be easier for them to receive guidance. Yeah. So, but there in Quran, Allah uh, specifically says, He misguides. It's the, I it's just Allah explained to you, my friend. I just explained to you, and all that five minutes or so I explained to you, you still didn't yeah, get it. I was so Allah misguides those people. Meaning what? He leaves them 
in their misguidance, those people who have these characteristics, if you are going to be someone, hmm. say you are a cheater, you cheat and you deceive and you oppress, you commit yourself to be in misguidance. You make yourself to be misguided because you have not made yourself to receive guidance by removing these bad characteristics. So the Allah's misguidance or leaving people to be misguided is not God's fault in any way. God is saying, Allah is saying, people by themselves with their own choice will to be misguided by having these characteristics. Do you understand that point? Yeah, I understood it. But leaving someone to be misguided and misguiding someone is a two different thing. Unless he sends, he uh, he he sends uh, to to the person to be misguided. He does not say that he leaves the person misguided. Rather, he says, no, 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 says no, no, that no, no. he yes, sends yes, the person bro. astray. Yes, we are. I'm going to put it to you even deeper, man. Do you understand that it's consequential? Do you understand mm -hmm. the guidance? Do you understand that the guidance is consequential? Uh, yeah, you know? I understand that Allah, uh -huh. it, are, are it, it works sure? according to the will of Allah. No. He doesn't understand the word consequential. He doesn't understand the word consequential. Okay. Yeah. It means that if a person wants to do good, the consequence is proper guidance. If a person wants to do bad, the consequence is guidance towards hellfire do you understand uh it's you're talking about the concept of free will but allah says he he's the one who makes the person do bad okay no allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not say that he is saying that i give you the playing field i give you the option the option is you can do good and the consequence of good is good hmm. if you do bad the consequence of bad is bad but i'm giving you both options it is within the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for you to have many options in your life. From hmm. right now, you can literally jump off a building. I would be glad, don't do that. Okay. Or you can go out and feed a homeless person. You have this option, right? Right now, you can say, uh, you can you can give a, your neighbor a smile or you can give him a frown. These are all options. And no matter how big yeah, or small. But Allah says, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, but ahead. Allah says that it's the it's his will, not the person's will. As Allah says, he sends astray uh, to the people, to his creation on his will, not the person's will. The, if, the, if the person wants to go to the bad, he cannot go to the bad until Allah wills. So Allah is the one who is sending the person. No. Let me explain it to you in a different way, brother. I want you to take a circle okay. and draw a circle. Okay? Hmm. E hmm. Everything within the realm of possibility, within the realm of possibility for you, is in Allah's will. Meaning, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to tell you that you need to go fly right now because it's not within the realm of possibility for you, okay? Anything outside of the realm of possibility, okay, mm -hmm. is not in his will. Meaning that if you were to try to do something that you're incapable of doing, the test would be unfair for you. So, for example, right now, uh, how old are you? I'm 19. Okay, why aren't you 67? Because I'm 19. I was born 19 years ago. Okay, great. So, in his will, you, he willed for you to be 19 today. He did not will for you to be 67. So, the idea now is that any possibility no, that you I, have i being 19 is not in allah's will right i was born 19 years ago that, uh, that was the destiny of my birth it is in his will because he could have taken your life at 18. so, how, is, so then how could i have been 67. that's my point my point is is that you you would never be faced within an impossibility anything outside of god's will is an impossibility anything outside hmm. of his will it is not possible hmm. for you Okay. I think yes. brother Maurice, there's okay. one point to make a comparison. I think that's what you, if you're coming from a Sanatani background, because there is no will involved of God, they, everything is determined by karma. No, as as I told you, I'm an atheist. Uh, I'm no, no, but, coming from an atheist you know, the baggage, background. I'm the agnostic. baggage you may have, uh, Yashvid, the baggage you may have, is everything is determined by karma, 
God themselves are within the karma in in, in sense because no one uh, is God is not in control, right? Karma is the one in whose control decides everything. So that means there is no free will. It just happens because of karma. Islamic concept is this: God is the one who is supreme, the majestic, the almighty. Yes. The, the mm. one who is the king of kings. He is in control of all affairs. So without his will, nothing happens. Nothing exactly. can happen without his will. Mm. That exactly. means you, even to will or have free will, he has to grant you that. He has to will for you to have free will. He has to will for you to do all of these things. So he gives you the ability to make mm. willful choices. That's why he says, Oma tasha'una illa ayyasha Allah. You cannot will until he, unless he wills. That means if God doesn't yes. give you the functionality of your volition, your willingness, your making of choices, you won't be able to make your choices. Yeah? Right. So Simply when put, he grants yes. you those so, choices, so Allah the choices says, that you make is your own within the capacity yes. he's given. Hmm. So Allah says he uses his wills and forcefully sends me astray. He misguides no. me forcefully because it's it's it's, it's Allah no. who is using his will now. Right you now, you said that everything. Just can I speak for one second, please? It's such a simple topic, but people overcomplicate it, and and you're yeah, doing exactly. exactly that. So here's the deal. I want you to think of it like this: Is it in God's will for you to okay. go to Paris? Is it in God's will for you to go to paradise? Yeah, like you have the capabilities to go to paradise. You have the capabilities of conducting good actions. You have the capabilities to believe. You have the capabilities to do good things, right? Yes. Yes, I have the okay. capabilities, but Allah is misguiding. No, bro, <laughs> come on, man. With the Work with me here just a little bit, okay? Now, do you ha also mm -hmm. have the capabilities to do bad things? Yes. Do you have the capabilities to end up in hellfire? Yes. If if you have if it's within God's will for you to end up in either place, do you have a problem with that? Um, if God is forcing me to land in one place, then I have problem. Nobody's if He's not, then I have no problem. Listen to my question. I just gave you two equal situations. One situation leaves is is. Is it in Allah's will for you to end up in paradise? Meaning, do you have the capabilities of doing good? Okay, so if I do good in my own will, then Allah uh, can send me in paradise. If I do bad in my own will, then Allah can send me to hell. Okay, so now it is in his will, meaning he set the playing field for you. He gave you and okay. he is going to give you many opportunities to do good and many opportunities to do bad, right? No, but Allah says he sends me astray. He's, uh, he's uh, doing the, Just according wait. to Allah's will. You're putting he's... the cart before the horse, bro. You're putting the cart okay, before the horse. Okay. I'm going to explain it to you. Okay, Just bro. work. You you can we're, trying to, we're trying to show you exactly where you're going wrong. And every time I try hmm. to open up the subject, you just jump. Don't do that. Just okay. wait. You can okay. continue, bro. Huh, yes. Okay. So, so do you have the capabilities to go left? Yes. Do you yes, have, I have the, the capabilities. Great. Do you have the capabilities to go right? Yes. Great. The roads, the roads of going left and going right are available to you. So far, so good? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, he tells you what the conditions are in order for you to be guided to the right, which is the, the proper mm -hmm. place. And he mm -hmm. says, you conduct good actions by mm. obeying my commands, then mm. I keep guiding you to more and more right. Meaning, why, okay. why would you be a bad person if you're doing good things? Now, on the same token, but, but this is where I don't want you to jump again. On the same token, he says, if you keep doing, if you keep going left, meaning you're conducting actions to keep going left, then I'm going to keep opening more and more doors for you to go left and you will be misguided. Why? Because when you were given the choice, you chose. So I gave you the playing field and you chose your will was to go left. 
just like you mm. can choose to go right. But you, now here's what a human being does. Sometimes they go left. Sometimes they go right. Sometimes they go two to the right, one to the left. Sometimes they go three to the left, one to the right. Okay. And now here's the concept of repentance. So if your moral compass is in line with the Quran and you recognize that you need to repent for a bad action, whether that be saying sorry to the person that you did wrong, okay, <laughs> or saying sorry to the person that you did wrong and apologizing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by seeking repentance because you disobeyed. So for example, he says, be kind to your neighbor. You weren't kind to your neighbor. You owe your neighbor an apology. And worse off, worse off and more important off is you owe Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala an apology because you were disobedient to not only your creator, but you were disobedient yes. to your name. Right? Hmm. Hmm. Okay. So now, so if, if you ask for forgiveness, he's going to put you towards the right path again. Hmm. You understand? And I'm so going to share... Some doubt, doubt is... Uh -huh, go ahead. Just one second. Can I speak? Okay, yeah. so here my doubt is, you said that if a person is doing bad, then Allah opens the path for that person to do more bad. So for example, let me assume that I'm a rapist, I'm a bad guy, I'm an evil. So if I am uh, raping three women, Allah will misguide me and tell me to rape five women instead of three. So it's Allah who's opening path no. for me to rape uh, more that, women. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, okay. is that... You, you, uh, I don't want you to look at as just like purely action. You have to look at the root cause of this. So, for example, you chose to be an atheist, right? You and Allah. No, I'm not an atheist. I'm an agnostic right now. Right you now, I'm an agnostic. Just gave me an example of an atheist, right? Did you not just give me an no, example? No, my parents are atheist. I am an agnostic. My parents are atheist. Okay. I'm an agnostic. But did I maybe mishear you? Didn't you just say I'm an atheist? Not you, but you're the example. <laughs> You said, what if I'm an atheist and I choose to, you know, take advantage of women? Did you not just say that? I I said that I'm in a rapist. If I'm a rapist, I'm a bad oh, guy. Okay, okay. I misheard you. I apologize. Okay, so let's say somebody is a rapist and they choose to take advantage of women, okay? If that person has a character defect, so what the character defect is, is they are in a state of disillusion or a state of delusionment because they think that they are mm. not going to be able to, that they're not going to be held accountable for their actions. So when you take yes. a look at someone who's a rapist, they are not necessarily people that fear God. They are people that yes. either fear society or they fear jail. Mm. So they think that they can get away with stuff, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. So yes. now... From, from our worldview, from the Islamic worldview, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, you're not hiding anything from anyone. I see everything that you do, and I know what's in your heart, and I know what character... Yes, so I'm a bad guy, right? So okay. according to Islam, a rapist is a bad guy, right? Yeah, absolutely. It's bad. Why would it... Why, how, could it how could it possibly be good? Hmm. So Allah says he misguides. With any moral compass, any, any, yes, any, yes. any human I, being. I understood your point, brother. So okay, Allah right. says he's misguided. So 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 if I'm a rapist and I rape only three women, so Allah right. is misguiding me, right? Stop, no, stop. No. no, no, this is this is great. Stop, Yashvir. Allah doesn't make you commit all the things you're saying. Commit terrorism, right? Commit rape and you so on. Wasn't you wasn't born a choose. Bro. You choose. You, you chose it. Yes, I right. you choose, choose it. You okay. have been given oh, yeah. the ability. One second. You have been given the ability of free free will. You. With your ability, can use it appropriately or misuse it and abuse it. Exactly. So when you go and exactly. rape, you are the exactly. one responsible. God is not misguiding you. You are misguiding yes. yourself. Yes. So if I am raping, Allah is saying He makes me more. Uh, he makes me do do it more because He says He no. misguides me. So no. if I'm a bad person and if I'm raping, He misguides me. Allah misguides me to rape more. Right. Brother, in, in the Quran, Surah 69, 93. No. He gave a reference, right? Quote yeah, me what yeah. it says in Surah 69, what? He, he brought Surah 69, number 93. Yeah, what does Surah it say? 69, 93. 93. Yeah, what does it say? 69, 93? Not 69, it's 16, 16. 16, 16, 16, 93. Yeah, what does it say? What does it say? It says, it says, Allah... Uh, sends people astray on their own will and uh, guides on, on, on his own will that's no. what it says 
That's not what it says. Read it in its entire in, in this, its entirety. Yes. What you what you need so to do. That's what it says. We cannot find it. Allahumma jalakum ummata wahida, walaki yudillu may yasha wa yahdu may yasha. Right. Right. So, if Allah willed, He could have made you all into one nation, but mm -hmm. He mm -hmm. misguides and as He wills and guides mm -hmm. as He wills. As I've mm. explained to you, this the will, its will of guidance, its misguidance, is explained in the Quran. So, he says, those who are oppressors, liars, they will mm. be misguided because they will not receive exactly, guidance. exactly. Wait, so wait, I am a rapist and a bad person. Wait, wait. So, if someone is doing all this bad deeds bad actions they yes. will not receive his guidance okay right? so you're saying someone rapes and then god okay. makes them rape more no yes if someone rapes they are in the misguidance and they are closing themselves from receiving guidance but it doesn't mean that somehow they feel becomes the angelic but once they rape three people and say oh i've done a good thing yeah, I feel like I'm crazy 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 when they wait. No, Allah says he misguides. Yes, fair. Yes, fair. Listen, when someone commits hmm. a crime, do you think they feel that they're doing something good? I want to challenge uh, no. you on this. I want no. I really no. want to challenge you on this. Someone who commits these evil things, do you think they know this is good and that they think this is what they're doing right? No. No. So they know they're doing wrong and they're still doing it. Yes. God is not yes. making them doing it. So if okay. you keep on saying, oh, God made them do again, then Yashvir, I'm going to kick no, you no. out from the studio. No, no, they no. are themselves uh, uh, making to... their own choice to continue these evil deeds. Yes, bro, God I... is only giving them the what? The free will for them to operate within this scope of free will. Because of their exercising the free will wrongly, the consequences they will face here or in the day of judgment is not going to be good. They will be punished because they choose to do evil things and evil things, bad things, will have bad consequence. So what is your objection, Yashvir? Yes. Uh, can What's I so unfair about this? Yes. Uninterrupted one minute, please. We have given you enough chance uh, and now you're saying playing the victim card uninterrupted. I want to ask you very simply. What is the unfairness that you see in the explanation that we've given in the yes, very concept yes, of I'm explaining it guidance? Right. Yes, I'm explaining it. Right. Mm -hmm. So I am a bad person. I'm a very bad person. I, I commit the sin of raping a woman. So Allah says he misguides the bad people. Allah is the one who misguides the bad people. I, 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 yes. I, according to you all. No, so no, no. It's person. not like that. It's not like that. Allah, Allah, Jalla wa ala, Look, mm. Allah is all knowing, so He knows, He okay. knows what you are and what you're doing, and that, and He has given you the free will. So, like what Mansoor okay. tells you, if with your free will you choose to be good, it is already in Allah's knowledge that you that you are good and you'll be doing good. So Allah Jalla mm. wa guides you towards the good. Now, if you are on the other hand evil and you do evil it is already in allah's knowledge that you are evil so you continue in your evil so you continue in your evil and it is all or everything it is within the decree of allah however in yes. that decree of allah you have your own will so there is only yourself to blame and not allah subhanahu wa ta'ala if I am a good person and I donate, for example, donate to people, so Allah guides me and makes me uh, do more good things. Similarly, if I'm a bad person, if I rape, so Allah misguides me. Allah says he sends astray. He sends no. astray. This is where your misunderstanding is. This is where your misunderstanding is. I don't understand what his issue is at all. Like, y Yashvir, seriously, dude, do you want do you want bad people to get rewarded? Is that what you're arguing? 
I think he's, he's, he's Allah. He was to blame about, Allah for it. Okay. Let me ask you this. He hung up about the term Allah misguides. So I totally understand. The Sheikh, the Sheikh has not. already explained to him that, for example, look, when a person does a good deed and he carries on good deed, Allah will then show him guidance towards goodness, towards the way of Jannah, towards Sirat al Mustaqim. But if a person does a bad hmm. deed and then he's been hmm. given some excuse to do good deed, Yes, but he still continues doing the bad things. No matter what other people advise him, no matter what his parents advise him, he continues doing the, ba the bad things. Yeah. So in okay. that case, Allah makes the path okay. of his, whatever he's doing bad, makes it easy for him. So wow. that is what, when he says okay. that Allah misguides, which you are hung up about, that is what it is. So no matter what so, opportunities of goodness so my, oh, in order to do good brother. he gets he continues Let doing him finish. Let him finish. yes and then what happens is because that is the path he has chosen now yes and uh, there are other passages in the quran where allah says he seals the hearts yes they are deaf dumb and blind <laughs> yes <laughs> Yeah, so in the Quran, you will see that Allah gives both. You know, He gives the option of to do good, and He tells you what is haram, and He tells you the consequences of what what happens when you continue doing the haram. Now, you tell me whose fault mm. it is. Yes, for them to voluntarily choose to do haram, even after all the signs and all the, uh, you know, all all the consequences which Allah told you and the warnings that the prophet and the messengers came with. And even the, like I said, even the society normally tells you to do good. Yeah. So let's but summarize. Carry on, yes. summarize. Carry on in yes. your evil. So who's to blame, so, my friend? Yeah. Let's summarize so, something for Yashvir. As you said, brother, brother, as you said, that uh, if, a, if a person, if a person is uh, doing bad. Yashvir, uh, one second, let's summarize for you. Morning. I want, I want to understand something. Imagine you have an alcoholic, right? So alcoholic okay. keeps on drinking alcohol, keeps on drinking alcohol. Very alcohol, bad, right? Time. Right. Okay. So, so you're saying an alcoholic who keeps on drinking alcohol more and more and more, the doctors are really blameworthy because they're saying don't drink because it's going to make you dependent on it, right? The doctors okay. are to blame. Okay. Hmm. Is that what your no, point no, no. is? The no, alcoholics no. Doctor, doctor, the keep on drinking. Doctor, doctor not say, the one moment, I'm trying to understand. Don't drink too much. You're going to get addiction. And you're going to be such addicted that you cannot even get away from it over drinking. Keep drinking. Smoking, same thing. Keep smoking so much more. Two, two packets, three packets a day. You're going to keep on smoking. You can't come off it. So are you saying the doctors are to blame because they say don't? Because if you keep on smoking and drinking, you are going to go into continuous smoking and drinking. Is okay. that what you're saying? So here, so here, the, the, the doctors are not to the blame because they're not misguiding him to drink more. If he's so, doing something so, bad. Ah, so now you understand, that's why the problem is then. You think when God says he misguides people, you think it means he deliberately misguides them. Isn't it? Yeah. He exactly says, that's he says uh, yes, deliberately. He says on, on his will. Yeah, yes, but Allah his says, will, he does it on his will. That's that's where you need to understand the expressions of this. What when Allah says He misguides or He guides, it doesn't mean God deliberately okay. wants people to be misguided. It's simply closing the avenues of His guidance. And this is where, when the Quran talks about in Allah la yahdi wa ma yudillu and so on, wa ma yudillu bihi illa al fasiqin. Let me just sh share with you some of this very quickly, so you understand how his will is expressed mm -hmm. in terms of who receives guidance and who doesn't. I think this is where the misconception is from you, isn't it? So let me just yeah. bring this yes. up. One I second. just wanted to know who, who my lamb is. One second, one second, one second. So let me go back again. So if you see this screen, as I said earlier on, God says, Inna hadaynahu sabila imma shakira wa imma kafura. We already showed him the way, whether they choose to be grateful or ungrateful. That means God is constantly showing them guidance. Hadayinahu. Huda. Yep, this is the guidance. God is constantly showing the path, whether they were grateful or ungrateful. 
So now you don't see here God is saying, no, I'm going to leave them astray and so on. No, he's showing them both ways, whether they're grateful or ungrateful. This is a principle that needs to be embedded in your mind to understand what's going on here. So when God says here, so, look, I'm not finished yet. Yes. So the first, okay, okay. I am not finished okay. yet, my friend. Be patient. Yes. Continue. Here, towards the end. Wama yudillu bihi illa al -fasikin. So the examples that God gives, that God is not ashamed to give a, a similitude of even a, like a mosquito and so on and so forth. At the end, he says, you know, Wama yudillu bihi illa al -fasikin. If, if I want to make it a little bit bigger, so you know what I'm saying here. Just one second. And he leaves none to astray except the rebellious, right? The Fasik means with this example that mm. he provides, okay, if mm. you are a rebellious individual, you would be okay. in a position of misguidance. He will leave you Please. astray. He will leave you in your misguidance because you have a character trait. You, look, but it's your free it's will. Not, it's your free will. It's your free will. You choose to. He gives you the capacity to continue yes. using your free will yes, so on the wrong my free will. way. Yeah. Hmm. Continue. Yes, yes, continue. So according according to yeah. your free will. Have according you not seen, have you, not, have you seen, O Prophet, those who have taken their own desires as their God? And so Allah left them to stray knowingly, sealing their, seal their hearing and hearts and placed a cover on their side. Who then can guide hmm. them after Allah? Will you all not be hmm. mindful? So what we're seeing here again, People, when they make their own desires as their God, they will be in a position of misguidance because it's their own making. Wallahu la yeah. yahdi al so, so, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. You are talking over me. Listen and learn and understand the issue first of all. Here. Thinking of the next Allah question. Man huwa kathibun kafar. Allah certainly does not guide whoever persists in lying and disbelief. Wallahu la yahdi al zalimin. Allah does not guide the wrongdoing people. Yes, Allah does not guide the wrongdoing. Allah does not guide those who choose to disbelieve. Brother Mansur, can I just ask him something very quickly? Let me give him a mental break. Yashvir, do, do people that are doing wrong have the ability to apologize and repent? Yes, they have. What's the consequence of that? Guidance or misguidance? Guidance. Okay, so now are they a, are they a wrongdoer or are they a good doer? Good doer. If, did if they have a choice? Repents, did, they, did they have a choice to repent or not? Yes, they uh, did have a choice. Great. They there you go. They exercised their choice to repent, and they became a good doer, and they got good guidance. Yes. So, good. but Allah says. Wait, 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 hold on to your thought. But Allah you, you've made good progress. Wallahu la yahdi al qawm al fasiqeen. Allah does not guide the rebellious people. Inna ladhina la yuminu bi ayati allahi la yahdihum Allah wa lahum adhabun alim. Those who do not believe in the evidences, in the revelations of God, they will not be guided by Allah. Right? Yes. And they will have a they severe will be misguided. Punishment. No. They, those who reject, those who do not believe in the evidence, the ayatillah, in the revelations, in the ayat, in his evidence that he sends, if you do not yes. believe in them, Allah would not mm. guide them. La yahdihum Allah. Because you... Allah will misguide them. Choice. Listen, yes. listen. Yashvir, listen. You are so stubborn. You're not listening and understanding. I don't think he's listening at all. And it really you're not listening. This question. So, I want to really, no. finish this with an example here. Look. Inna Allah la yahdi man huwa kathibun kaffar. Allah certainly does not guide whoever persists in lying in disbelief. You are persistently being stubborn. So it's very important for you to really understand what's going on here. Inna Allah la yahdi man huwa musrifun kathab. Allah does not guide whoever is a transgressor, a total liar. So what we are seeing here is the example of how Allah lets people in their misguidance it's not that he's willy-nilly arbitrarily says i'm going to misguide people his misguidance is basically he's leaving them in their misguidance if they fall into these categories as as brother Maurice has explained they have opportunity to repent and mend themselves and do good and when they start mending themselves what's going to happen 
they're going to start receiving guidance. By the way, I don't yes. know if the audience is witnessing this right now, but you're actually Just seeing the miracle. Second. Can I speak Hold now? On, I have been waiting for very long. You Please. definitely can. You yeah, definitely wait, can. wait a bit more. I don't know if the audience has actually seen this. You're witnessing the miracle of the Quran right in front of you. You have a person who is literally being defiantly disobedient, stubborn, arrogant, not, not upon any knowledge, of young age, and he's claiming that he's not being misguided, yet he's talking to a Dawah panel who is trying to get him onto the truth, and he is still being defiantly disobedient. You exercised your free yes. will to come onto this panel. God did not force you to come here. And you're choosing to stay. Allah and you're says, choosing to be the final Allah disobedient. That, uh, Dude, Allah like, says that up, even, uh, Just one second, bro. Allah says that even Prophet Muhammad can't guide those people whom Allah has misguided. So Allah, if let's assume that Allah has misguided me. So how no 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 he didn't say that he didn't say that he didn't say that Allah in the Kalata Diman Ahbab Walakin Allah Yadiman Yesha. Oh Muhammad, you do not guide those whom you love, but Allah, but Allah guide whom so he willed. When you quote Quran, quote it properly, please. Yeah. Yeah. By the way, look, I don't think you were listening at all to what Mansur was saying to you. You had in your mind, I, I think the it. only thing in your mind is Allah misguides. This is like imprinted in your mind. You were not listening at all to clarification which Mansur gave you. So I think you're just wasting yes. time here. I said, what do you do? I listen to him, brother. And what's the section? I listen to him. What's the section in which Mansur was explaining to you the, the very question that you kept asking repeatedly? Every time he was explaining okay. to you, you already were like interrupting him, which means that you were not listening. Okay. So be sincere. What did I interrupt? And try to learn rather than trying to just impose what you what you are trying to you know whatever agenda you came here with. Do you actually believe in free will, by the way? Yes, I believe in free will, but Allah okay. does not. Okay. So who granted you the free will? Um, if God exists, He granted me. What do you mean? If God exists, He's an agnostic. Did you create? I'm an did you create the free will in yourself? I'm an agnostic. He's an agnostic. Who granted an you agnostic, the free will then? The, the the nature, it's it's by Sorry? nature. It's by nature. If God exists, are you really agnostic? Here? Because your religion is really doesn't make sense, and you present yourself yeah. an agnostic. We see a lot of Hindus or Sanatanis when they find okay. themselves not comfortable to talk about the the you know the, the rational religion, basis yeah. of the religion. They present themselves as atheists or agnostics. It's, are it's you really a Hindu or, or an agnostic? Which one are you? But here, but here, when I ask question on Islam, you're asking my religion. No, no, no. Now just answer. Yes, we do. I think we, we do. We a lot of your challenge your religion as well. Let's be fair. What is your real religion? Is it Hinduism? You are a Sanatan. I'm agnostic. You? you are a Sanatan. I'm an agnostic. No, you are a Sanatan. I'm forcing why you, anyone. Why are you afraid to admit it? I'm an agnostic. What is your brother? view about uh, what? What is what? Uh, do you? What do you think about Vishnu? Is he a real god or is he? A I friend? haven't studied about him. I haven't studied. No one studied. Him. Oh, so you, you studied about Islam, but not about Hinduism. Seriously. I, as I said, I just began. Okay. Bro, I just said, Yashvir, I speak, Yashvir, are, you are you speaking the truth or are you lying? To say you're a Hindu. I, I'm Don't beginning to study on every religion. So let me yeah, make sure. That's what you guys say. You just began, and you're here to teach all of us. About how it's properly understood, and you just began. I'm not right? teaching you. As I yes, said, I'm just are. quoting Quran. No, you're not. I'm quoting you're, Quran. You're misquoting it upon misquoting it, and then you're trying to elaborate no. on understanding that you don't have, bro. Just be real with yourself. You know, making, you know, trying to portray yourself as an agnostic and your parents as atheists. I think that's really, okay. really low. Can't get any lower than that. Just say you're a Hindu. You're but, just afraid to say. That you're a Hindu because you don't, you. you don't want us to question you. You don't want us to question Vishnu or Ganesha or any of your Bhagwan. No, I'm asking. So can't you present yourself as an agnostic. agnostic. See, yes, I'm an agnostic. You're I'm an agnostic. Asking, I can't anyone. Okay, so yes. all let me let me ask you this. So you you don't believe in any god to be true. All the Hindu gods are false. They are not true. I'm not an atheist. I'm an agnostic. I don't know. You, which you god sound is true. you sound like an atheist. Actually, you sound like a Hindu if you ask Bro, me. It's, but you're just afraid to say. No, it. no, no. It does not depend. It does not depend on uh, you. 
good well, that you're I agnostic, sound. right? It, yes, it depends okay. on let's me, take, right? Let's, let, let's take your word, you're agnostic. So the Hindu deities, the pantheon of deities, do you believe in any, or, any one of them? His excuse is he hasn't learned about them. Right, okay. Do you believe in any one of them? No, I don't believe. So you don't believe in any of the Hindu deities and Hindu gods, right? I haven't read about them. I don't I'm believe. not asking you whether you've read or not. Do you believe in any of the deities? Do you respect no. any of the deities? Do you make puja to any of the deities? No, I don't do puja and all. My respect is for all. You respect... Uh, so you, you actually think there could be a monkey god like Hanuman? See, you are... Okay. So you are here to insult one... Just answer the question, man. Come on. Do you actually think there's a possibility that a monkey god like the question, Hanuman? Answer the question. He felt insulted when you said a monkey god. Exactly, yeah. Yeah. Because he's a Hindu. He just doesn't want to admit. No. Go on. Build your security somewhere else. Yeah, bro. Bye-bye. Wallahi, these guys are a waste of time.